Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to lesson two about Microsoft Word. Today we are going to be working with columns and with tables and I'm going to be modeling for you how to do your assignment which will require you to make a weekly schedule for yourself. And the reason I've chosen this assignment is in order to make this weekly schedule for yourself you're going to have to use the column function of Microsoft Word and the table function on Microsoft Word. So the first thing I want to do is make this viewable to you in a way that works. So I'm going to drop this to about 175 percent and now we have a screen resolution that I believe you all can see and that will work well for you. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my font. What font do I want to use? for this activity and I am a fan of Calibri which just so happens to I'll use Calibri Lite just to keep it fresh and I'm going to make my font size 14. Now in this assignment I am requiring you to have two columns at the top of the page so you need to go know how to do that so we're going to go to layout we're going to go to columns and I'm going to create two columns. So the first thing you need to know when you create columns is that you're going to put the content in one column before you create what we call a break and move yourself over to the other column. So uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is um, make sure I have this in bold because I'm requiring it to be in bold and then we're going to type in the name of the class which is what you are going to do for your assignment as well. Computer literacy, you're going to put my name, Mr. Blumendahl, and you're going to put Waldo Middle School. So that should be fairly easy for you, but this is where it becomes challenging because in order to get to the other column over here, you have to do what's called a column break. So make sure the cursor is flashing after your last letter, which in this case is the L in school. And then you're going to go up here to where it says insert, and you are going to enter uh, break. And we need to find a column break specifically. So we do not want a page break because a page break will send us to the very next page, and we don't want to go to the next page. So we need a column break. This is where it puts columns. Now one of the interesting things here of course is that this is the newest version of Microsoft Word. So what you're watching right now is Mr. Blumendahl actually struggle with how to do it. So here it says columns. Right next to where it says columns they now have breaks. So you're going to press on breaks right there. You're going to pull, get to the pull down menu by left clicking and you're going to go to column break. So now watch this. My cursor is now magically up here. So this is where you are and you're going to unbold it. It does not need to be bold now. You're going to put your name. You're going to put uh, assignment number two and you're going to put today's date. Now please don't write your name in today's date. You'll actually put your actual name and you'll put the actual date. I'm now going to press return and now we want the columns to end. So because we want the columns to end we're going to go to insert up above and we do not want a page break. So I'm going to go back to layout breaks, we're going to call this a continuous break. What a continuous break does is ends the formatting of the section above the break and creates new formatting below the break. So now we do not want columns. So see where it's still on two columns here? I'm going to take it back to one column. So it means that above the break we have two columns and below the break we now have one column. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a title 
for the assignment. And of course, Mr. Blumendahl likes his titles to be centered. So I'm going to align it to the center right here. I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to make it italicized. And I'm going to make it underlined. And I'm going to put my weekly schedule. And you are going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to keep it centered. And I'm going to get rid of the underlining. I'm going to get rid of the italics. And now we need to create a table. And the table is going to become our schedule. So I'm going to go to Insert. And right below Insert is Table. So this is where you will highlight how big your table need to be. We need it to be seven days wide, because to have a weekly schedule, there are seven days in a week. And I am going to make it so that you can put your school schedule on here. So we need at least six boxes. Um, I also want to add a seventh box so you can list the days of the week. And I'm going to add an eighth box so that you can also put whatever after school activities you have going on in the box. So we're going to make it seven wide for the seven days of the week and eight deep. So, and you know what? Just to show you how to do this, I'm going to add a ninth. Because, watch this. If I go, if I'm, I'm right clicking now, and it says insert. I'm going to insert a row above. So I've now created a ninth row. But watch this. If I left click and highlight all of these boxes, and then once they're highlighted, I right click, it will say merge cells. Watch this. All those lines just disappeared. And I can now cut and paste my weekly schedule Watch this. I'm going to cut. So I'm now right clicking and pressing cut. I'm going into the table and I'm now left clicking and pressing paste. Boom. My weekly schedule is now there. And you know, that doesn't look good underlined at this point. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to de underline it. But now I have my weekly schedule. So now I'm going to enter the days of the week. So here's uh, actually, we'll make the first day Sunday because in America, the first day is considered Sunday. And I'm just going to type my days going across. And I'm actually going to shrink the font size on this in just a moment. And now these do come pre-formatted, but I deliberately am showing you how to do it this way so that you know how to do it. So the font on that is way too big. We're going to come up here and we're going to shrink this to at least 12. And I'm going to go ahead and I think that's exactly how I want it to look. Now the other thing you can do is you can stretch the table. So see this little box down here? When the arrow has that diagonal look to it, you can literally do this and stretch the table. And I'm going to stretch it to the bottom of the page. That's my whole goal. So I'm going to stretch it all the way to the bottom. But I do not want it creating a new page. So that's about right. And then you can also do this. So when you see this effect here, we have a little line above and a little line below with the arrows. You can left click it and drag it up so that that box shrinks. And you can do the same thing here, left click it and drag it up so that that box shrinks. Now you have it looking pretty sweet. You've got boxes here. Now the thing is I have Monday through Friday set up for your class schedule, but Sunday and Saturday you don't need that. So I'm going to left click and highlight these boxes here. And now I'm going to right click and go Merge Cells. Okay. Now Sunday, you have a wide open block. I'm going to do the same thing for Saturday. I am left clicking, holding it down, and highlighting all of those. And now I'm going to right click and press Merge Cells. Now I have my calendar ready to go. And now really all it is is a matter of typing stuff in. So, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight the whole thing and make sure that everything is aligned to the left right here. Boom. So now everything inside will be aligned to the left. Okay, so Sunday um, is actually a day off for me. But on Sunday, it just so happens that I'm helping Steve move. And that will be at 9 a.m. 
and I don't need it to be that big. I also want to make sure my font size in these boxes is small enough that I can type stuff without it becoming too big. So my font size is going to be 11. See now helping Steve move looks reasonable. Monday, and now this is where Mr. B is just going to put his schedule. It just so happens that my schedule is the same. I teach U.S. History first period. I teach computer class third period. I teach U.S. History fourth period. I teach U.S. History fifth period. You're noticing a pattern. And I teach Eastern Civ sixth period. And it also leaves me room to put in and now you're going to watch me do a copying and pasting party, so watch this. Paste. Paste. This is not going to be exciting for you. Paste. Paste. And since this is also U.S. history, paste. Paste. This is not going to be exciting for you to watch or listen to. Paste. 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 Paste, paste, and one more time, paste. I'm going to do the same thing with my other classes. I'm going to go ahead and here and click copy, and now more pasting. So now literally, I am putting my entire schedule into the calendar by using the copy and paste function, and I'm going to do the same thing with your class, copy so now if I wanted to use this document I could literally put a brief summary of the lessons I'm going to teach on each of those days uh, into the box uh, and it just so happens my daughter Emma has a volleyball game this Saturday so I'm going to make sure I put in Emma's volleyball game it just so happens to be at Mark Twain school and it is at 10.30 a.m. So I now know that I have that coming up. And I could actually save uh, this as a template so that I could use it each week um, and fill in what I'm doing with my students. Now, you can also, obviously, and what I'm expecting you to do is enter more information here, like what you're doing in class each day. So you could literally take information from your planners and type it in here. Uh, what you're doing each day but in the end you're going to end up with a delightful document I'm going to go up here to view and I'm going to go up here to one page it'll look like that and let's see if I can go I can zoom the document to hundred percent right there I also should have a full screen option uh, but once again they have uh, changed Microsoft Word, so I could sit here and look for full screen. There is a full screen option somewhere, but by the time you're done, your document should look something like this. And I am saving this as a YouTube video so that you can go through and watch it a few times if you're not sure how to format. And of course, I will be there in class to help you. And this assignment is going to be more challenging than your original assignment. But um, that's the whole point. We want you to become more proficient at using Microsoft Word, uh, and you're not going to be able to do that unless you try. So hopefully you'll end up with a document that looks remarkably like this. If you wanted to change the font on the whole thing, you could just left click, highlight everything, and let's just go up here and as if by magic, turn it into my other favorite font, Kandara. Boom. I have now changed the whole thing to Kandara. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and end this tutorial video. This will help you with doing assignment number two. This will be more challenging for you. Some of you are, are ready for the challenge. So, um, And there's also a document on Google Classroom that will help you be successful on this assignment. So with that, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off once again with Monticello in the background. Computer Applications, Lesson Number 2, Microsoft Word, Columns and Tables is now concluded.